Let's look at some more examples of using dimensional analysis. First, we'll start with oral liquids. The order states to give Keflex oral suspension 0.35 grams PO every 6 hours. Available is a liquid labeled 125 milligrams per 5 ml. How much do you give? First, we need to follow the steps of dimensional analysis and decide what we want to give. So, deciding what I want to give, I know I'm giving an oral suspension and I'm going to be giving it in milliliters. Okay, so I'm going to start with milliliters is what I want to give. Okay, and I'm going to put milliliters on top. That's key. Make sure you put what you want on top. Okay, so now I need to look at my problem, and it tells me that I have available 125 milligrams per 5 ms, 5 mls. So I'm going to put my 5 ml up here, and 125 milligrams that goes with it down below. Okay, so now are there any conversions that I need to do? I'm looking at my order and see that it is in 0.35 grams, but I have milligrams that's available, so I do need to do a conversion. So I know that I'm going to have to get rid of the milligrams here, so I'm going to put milligrams here. Okay, and I know that there is 1,000 milligrams in one gram okay all right so now i need to put my order in so i have an order of 0.35 grams and do i have everything i need to complete this problem Crossing out my grams, cross out my milligrams, I'm left with mLs, which is what I want. When I do the math across, I will end up with, at the top, come down here, I'll end up with 1750 at the top and divided by 125. And that gives me my answer which is 14. 14 milliliters is how much I would give this patient PO. So this is an oral medication and here is our medicine cup. So you would fill it up to the 14 ml area. And this is how much medicine you would put in your cup to give your patient okay of course you could use a syringe to get a more accurate dosing but at home you could use this kind of medicine cup to measure out the medication now we'll look at how to give injections whether it's going to be IV or IM an intramuscular injection so this one says give clindamycin 0.3 grams IM every six hours available is a liquid vial labeled 300 milligrams per 2 ml now we have to decide how much of this available vial we have to pull out of here to give to our patient we're going to start with what we want. What we want is a ML, right? Because we're going to give liquid, it has to be in a liquid form. So we're going to give ML. So that's what I want. Okay, I'm going to put that on top. Okay, so what is available to me? I have 300 milligrams per 2 mLs. My mLs go on the top. 300 
milligrams go on the bottom. Okay, do I have any conversions to do? Why, yes there is, because this says milligrams and this says grams and it does not match. So we have to make them match, okay? So I'm going to have to be able to cross my milligrams out. So I'm going to put my conversion factor for milligrams to grams, and that's 1,000 milligrams is equal to 1 gram. Okay, now what is ordered? I have 0 0.3 grams ordered for me. Now, let's see. Can I cross everything out? Grams crosses out, milligrams crosses out. What am I left with? Well, mLs, so that's what I want. So I am good to start my math now, okay? So when I multiply across, I'm going to get 600 across, and at the bottom it stays 300, because 300 times 1 is 300, and when I do the math, it is 2 mLs. So that's how much I'm going to give. I'm going to pull out 2 mLs out of that 300 milligram vial and give it to my patient. So here is my syringe, and I would fill this up to 2 mLs. Pull out that much medication out of my vial, and that is what I would give to my patient. Put a needle on there and give it IM into the muscle. Let's look at one more. This order says give digoxin 0 0.5 milligrams IV every six hours times three doses. Available is a vial labeled 0 0.25 milligrams per one ml. Now there is some extra information in this one that don't get confused about setting up your problem. It says that we want to give this amount, 0.5 milligrams, on three separate, separate occasions, okay? Every six hours, only three times. So six hours from now, six hours from then, six hours from then, three doses. That's it. The same order, the same order three times, but frequenced every six hours, okay? So we don't even need this stuff in this problem, so don't let it confuse you. So we're going to give digoxin 0.5 milligrams IV. We have a vial that's labeled 0 0.25 milligrams per 1 ml. Let's set it up in dimensional analysis, starting with what we want. We want to give mLs. Okay, and my mLs are going to go on the top. Always the top. Okay. So what is available? I have a vial labeled 0.25 milligrams per 1 ml. So 1 ml has 0 0.25 milligrams. Do we need to do conversions? Let's see. I have milligrams in my available. I have milligrams in the order. Okay. So I don't need to do any conversions. So now I can move on to what is ordered in my problem. So I have milligrams that I need to be able to cross out, and I have 0 0.5 in my order. Okay. Let's see. Is that all I need to do? Can I cross everything out? Am I left with what I want? Absolutely. So when you do your math, you're going to have 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.25 and that equals 2 mLs. That's how much we're going to give. And again, when we pull up our syringe, we're going to pull it up to 2 mLs and that will give us what was ordered by the doctor. Okay, so we're going to give 2 mLs. This is a liquid 2 mLs and it equals 0 0.5 milligrams, just like the doctor ordered, because this is the concentration of the medication. 
in liquid format. Okay, and that's how you do dimensional analysis for uh, VRIM liquid dosing. Now let's look at injections that are reconstituted. Now that means that we have a powder medication that we have to mix something with it to shake it up so it can become a liquid and we can inject it as an IM injection or an IV uh, as, um, infusion. Um, so we have to figure out what in the problem do we need the information and which information in the problem we don't need. So you just have to understand what we're doing here in order to completely understand how to pick out what you need out of the problem. So let's take a look at this one about solumedrol. We want to give solumedrol 200 milligrams IV every six hours. That's our order. Okay, available is a vial. On the label, it has 500 milligrams and it's a powder. Add 8 milliliters of sterile water for a concentration of 62.5 milligrams per 1 ml. Now, let's look at this. Do we, what do we need? We see our order, so what is actually available? We have a bunch of numbers here, 500, 8, 62.5, and 1. So, let's see. We want to give milliliters. Let's just start there. We want to give milliliters. Okay, I'm going to write that out. Milliliters. Okay, milliliters goes on top. That's what we want to give. All right, okay. So what am I going to put up there for my milliliters then? Well, if you look at it, we have 500 milligram vial okay we have a vial let's say it says 500 milligrams okay but once we add the water to it once we add the water it's going to make 62.5 per 1 ml okay that's all we need we want to know what the final concentration is going to be because that's where we build our math problem off of. So we're going to have 1 ml that has 62.5 milligrams in it. Okay, once we add our water, we shake it up, each 1 ml is going to give us that amount. Okay, so that's what we want. And that's what's available right here. Okay, so any conversions to do? No, because this is in milligrams, so is the order. So we don't need to do any conversions. So now I'm going to go with what is ordered. The order says that we need to give 200 milligrams. All right. It is simple as that. So now we're going to cross out milligrams. Milligrams, we're left with mLs, which is what we want to give. When we do the math of 200 divided by 62.5 equals 3. 0.2 mLs, and that is how much we're going to give. Now, just remember what we're doing. We have a, a 500 milligram vial, and it tells us the instructions to add the 8 mLs of water. So we would have a final concentration of 62.5 milligrams per 1 mL. We're going to give 3.2 of it, of it, and then the other 5 mLs we're going to waste. Okay, whatever's left, it just goes in the garbage. Unless it's a controlled substance and it gets wasted in the fixes. So that is how we do reconstituted medications. Just read through it carefully. Now let's look at flow rates. The first one we're going to do is milliliters per hour. And then we will move on to drops per minute, which is a manual flow rate. Okay, so we're going to start with this one. This is something we're going to set our infusion pump to. So we're going to do milliliters an hour. This order says give 1,000 milliliters of normal saline over 12 hours. What rate will you set the pump? So we're going to follow the same process of dimensional analysis, and we're going to decide what we want. What do we want? We want milliliters per 
hour, okay? And we're going to put what we want on top, milliliters. And we have a thousand milliliters. And our problem says that we need to deliver that in 12 hours. Now, there's nothing else left to do for this one. You have everything you need. You need milliliters per hour. Your milliliters are on top. You got their hours on the bottom as it states. When you do the math, you're just going to do simple division. And that equals 83.3 .3 milliliters per hour. But usually we set our pump infusion rates at whole numbers. So this would be 83 milliliters per hour. Now for this one, we're going to not have an infusion pump and we're going to use a drop factor tubing set that will deliver the prescribed order. So we have to figure out the drip rate, actually counting the dots of the drops to see how much it is per minute. So when we're doing flow rates with macro drop tubings or micro drop tubings and their drops, you're going to have a drip rate which is drops per minute all right so I've decided that I what I want to give is drops per minute that's what I'm going to be counting so drops goes at the top okay now next we look at our problem what is available to me I have a tubing set that's available to me that is 20 drops per ml. That's what I'm gonna put here. 20 drops per one ml, okay? Now, do I have any conversions? No, everything's in milliliters already. Okay, so now we're gonna look at what's ordered. What do I want ordered? I want a thousand milliliters. And it says that I need to deliver that over 12 hours. Okay, so we have an issue here because we need minutes and not hours so we've got to convert that hour to minutes so we have 12 hours we have one hour is in 60 minutes okay now let's see are we done with all of our dimensional analysis problem let's see can we cross out hours we can cross out milliliters what are we left with well we're left with drops per minute which is what we wanted in the beginning so now we can do our the multiply across top multiply across the bottom when you do that and you divide after you multiply then you equal 27.7 drops per minute but we can't count partial drops so that is going to be rounded up to 28 drops per minute okay so you would actually count in the drip chamber 28 drops per minute to have the accurate drip rate now we're going to look at determining how many hours an infusion will run Take a look at this example. Here's our order. Give 500 milliliters of normal saline IV to infuse at 75 milliliters an hour. We're going to calculate how long it will take this infusion to com be completed. What time will it be completed? How many hours will it take? You're going to take the number of milliliters and divide it by the number of milliliters per hour. And that will give you the number of hours to run the infusion. So for this problem, we're going to take the 500, our number of milliliters that we need to infuse, over our rate, the number of milliliters per hour. Okay, and if we can cross those out, and that will leave us with just hours, and when you divide that, you're going to get 6.7 hours. But we have a problem because we don't 
look at hours in decimal fractions, we've got to change this 0.7 of an hour into minutes. So that's going to be six hours and some minutes. So to make the 0.7 into hours, we're going to take the 0 0.7 and multiply that by 60 minutes. Because there are 60 minutes in one hour, and this is just a percentage of the 60 to give us the 0.7 part of the 60 minutes. When you do the math, it equals 42. So that gives us an answer of 6 hours and 42 minutes. And that's how long it will take to infuse the 500 milliliters at a rate of 75 milliliters per hour. Let's take a look at one more way we can do this problem. This order says 250 milliliters of normal saline at 100 milliliters an hour. It started at 1, and what time will it finish? When will it finish? Okay, so first thing that we need to do is determine what, uh, how, many, how long it takes to infuse, just like the first problem. So we're going to take our number of milliliters. And divide that by our rate. Okay, that's going to give us how many hours it takes to infuse, which would be two and a half hours. Okay, so now we look at, well, we started at 1 p.m., so we're going to add two and a half hours to 1 p.m. Two and a half hours. So one, that would be three thirty, because a half an hour is thirty minutes. So it would be complete at three thirty.